it is time for another heat test video it's a hot day today in San Clemente it's about 80 and uh, there's no wind so perfect conditions to stress test this new board it's a Thor 400 this is my son's board you can probably see that my flight fins are mounted the wrong way because he's goofy footed I'm regular Thor 400 in the front complete box and a torque box in the rear with a board garage fast pack and an Anoid x Lite. Then we have the Superflux HT as a motor with a TFL Trail Pro 2. We got flight fins and the X7 prism colored rails. And then we got some bang bumpers at the bottom here, the new uh, torque bang bumper. Cush wide foot pads in the front and the rear. Got the stoked stock V2 sensor in there, so super cool board. Yeah, it's a really nice board. It took us a while to get it going. It's actually not our first choice. We had a, an MTE hub with a regular hypercore on it because my son doesn't need the torque off the off the super flux and uh, doesn't want that extra five pounds or so. But um, we screwed up the rewiring of the motor and in the process we fuck <laughs> in the process we destroyed a Thor and we destroyed my X12 as well because I didn't think it was the motor and uh yeah, so now I have a, a dead X12 and a dead Thor. And luckily, Fungineers was kind enough to send us a second Thor 400. So we were able to finish this build. But um, yeah, really frustrating, which means that my other 30S board is now out of commission. Alrighty, so how are we looking on temperatures? It's bright out here. 35 and 32, so not bad on the downhill here, not even 100. But let's see how it does on the uphill. Alright, so here's a climb test. For anyone who hasn't seen these before, I intentionally am going slow. This is not about speed. If you want to stress test the thermals of your, of your motor, stay below five miles an hour or around four to five miles an hour. That's where it's the most critical. And if you're saying, oh, that's not realistic and so on, then you obviously have not really climbed any uh, tricky steep single tracks. There are so many situations where you're climbing slowly and where fast. Ah! Stupid. The rains here have destroyed some of the trails, so it's a little tricky here. And I... Crap. Maybe I need more ATR. What's going on? Let me take a bit more ATR in here. Yeah, my nose wasn't lifting up enough, so once the nose touches, it's very easy to lose traction. So yeah, um, yeah, the, these tests, they really are representative of riding tricky trails where you are basically if it's technical and you have a lot of rocks and then you're never getting up to speed you're 
crawl up there like three to eight miles an hour constantly negotiating the terrain and that's why this hill is so perfect and what makes it so good for testing apples to apples is that it's easy to repeat the same kind of run over and over on different boards whereas if it was an actual like single track then it would be harder to maintain the same speed each time you do it whereas this one here is nice and sustained and it is hard enough that it is a challenge for most boards but pretty much all of them with the exception of like a gtx or a xr classic or old xr um, they can all make it up um, yeah we tried it on an xr classic that one didn't make it up the gt of course also didn't make it up I do have a video uploaded where I tried testing the thermals of the GT where you can see me try to make it up this hill and fail. So feel free to check it out. All right, so we made it up. Look at that, 44.5. The controller does not stay as cool as like a Thor 300, but it stays cool enough that it at least matches the motor which basically means it's not the bottleneck. So um, I think the Thor 300 could have done this staying probably below 40, but it is a hot day, so it is tricky for any controller. But yeah, this actually is doing really well. And uh, on a GTS, for example, I know I can do it once, but I wouldn't be able to do hill repeats on it. I think my drone might be out of battery and might want to land. But it's still going, so... Yeah, maybe I'll give it a break here and put another battery in. All right, so... I repeated this one more time and uh, I only got up to 45 again. So in these conditions, whoa, push. Landing. Landing. <laughs> Sorry, it just got way too windy for my iPhone. So overall, the Thor 400 can hang with the best of them. It did really well. I did repeat the whole run one more time after I noticed that the 30 second break that I gave the controller when I reconfigured ATR is actually an unfair advantage. So I wanted to make sure that I did the whole thing in one shot without stopping. And so I have shown the other numbers as well. So it is perfectly on par with the Tronic X12 controller, which is slightly bigger in its dimensions and harder to fit into the different controller boxes and also overall appears beefier and more robust but at least in terms of thermals the Thor 400 can easily match the X12. To put it all into perspective here is an overview of all the controllers I've tested so far. I do have to say that the tests with the ADV 200 were done at a fairly low temperature. It was only in the low 70s so they would probably be higher but you can clearly see how the older controllers are getting warmer whereas the new generation of controllers like the Thoros and the Tronics X12 they stay nice and cool and on the other end of the spectrum you've got the GTS and of course the GT which is saved by the fact that it can't deliver enough torque in most cases so you end up carrying it which helps it cool down on the other hand, there is also the motors, but I didn't want to put together a table of the motors. So far, I still haven't been able to get my hands on a GTS motor in a VESC board to do proper testing. Alright, this is all for now. See you guys next time.